talking. Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar with HelpPay. I'm Anna, I'm one of the campaign managers here at Birtual. Just before I introduce our incredible team from HelpPay, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I'm beaming in from today. So Birtual is based on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Now, Birchall is working with HelpPay on an upcoming crowdsource funding offer. What is crowdsource funding or CSF, you might ask? Well, it's also known as equity crowdfunding. It's a relatively new form of fundraising in Australia that allows startups and small businesses to raise capital from a large number of smaller or retail investors and wholesale or sophisticated investors through an online platform. That's Birchall. Now, instead of seeking funding from traditional sources, such as banks or venture capitalists, companies can actually turn to the general public, often their communities, uh, to raise, funny, raise, raise money sorry, in exchange for equity in their business. Now, virtual financial services will be the licensed intermediary for the offer. The information and discussion in this webinar is for informational purposes and shouldn't be considered as advice or a recommendation to invest. Please, as always, do your own research, consider the offer document and the general CSF risk warning before investing. That's all available on virtual.com and we'll have much more information for you throughout this session. So without further ado, because you're not here to listen to me, today I'm joined by the team from Birtual. Now I'll hand over to them shortly to introduce themselves. But before we do that, just a little bit of information of how today will run. So obviously we've got a webinar, we are a Q&A. So we will start with a wonderful presentation from the team, which they're really excited to take you through. Um, that'll go for approximately four I'm not sure how long it'll go for today, perhaps uh, perhaps about half of the time. Um, so they'll talk a little bit about, you know, where they've come from, their journey today, and a little bit more about their capital raise and their journey. Um, so we'll then switch to a Q&A session. Now you'll notice at the bottom of your screen, a Q&A button. So please throughout the presentation, please feel free to pop your questions in there as we go through in case, you know, you have the thought bubble and you don't want it to, to run away from you. Otherwise, we'll have time at the end for those question times. Now, we are also recording today's session. So if you do have to run off early, we've got lives. It's an evening. This session will be recorded and it will be shared afterwards and also available on their virtual uh, company profile. So that's enough from me. I'll hand over now to the virtual team, the, the help pay team, <laughs> not the virtual team. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Anna. As much as we love virtual, we love our business more. I'm out. <laughs> uh, my name is Andrew Ellett, everybody. I'm one of the co-founders of HelpPay. And you can see on the screen with me today is Rowan Wild, one of my fellow co-founders, John Bertrand, the chair of our Social Impact Advisory Board, and Sarah Tinsley, our non-executive director. And we hope to be joined shortly by Tony Hood, our chair. And unfortunately, apologies from our other co-founder, Adam Barty, who finds himself uh, on the way to a medical emergency at the moment. He is okay, but uh, the doctors need him to get him checked out. So unfortunately, you've got me filling in for Adam today. Uh, I'll let Rowan, John and Sarah introduce themselves and talk about their um, influence and their involvement with our business uh, when, they, when they talk. So rather than letting them say a few words now, they'll get the floor later on in the presentation and I thank them uh, particularly uh, John and uh, Sarah, our non-executive directors, for joining us today. Okay, let's get into this. We are so excited about what we're bringing to you, what this business uh, means to us, and what this business can mean to not only all Australians, but we hope all of the world. We started Help Pay with a really strong purpose. It is to make helping easier. It is to make connections between people easier by getting bills paid or with a guarantee that money will always go directly to the source. And that makes us a social impacts payment platform. I'm gonna take you through today a bit of, I guess, the stepping stones of the business so you can really understand why we started it and why we believe we can fulfill a really important role, not only in the Australian economy, but in people's lives. Our mission is to be on every Australian provider's bill as a payment option. When we achieve that, we will truly be a social impact payments platform and we will be giving providers that offer us as a payment option new tools to engage with their customers in a way that has never been done before. So I ask you to bear with, the help, bear with us a bit today while Rowan and I take you through the stepping stones of our business 
and help you understand the journey we've been on and I guess what it is we've spent the last 14 months doing and why we want your input for the next stage of our journey. And despite all the people you've got on the call today, the most important people on this call actually today is you, because we can't make this impact. We can't make this change without the support of more Australians. And this is why we've teamed up with Virtual to run our crowdsource funding campaign. So let me take you through the, I guess, a little bit to set the scene, the last, yeah, what we've been doing and why that leads us to the capital raise. We've been executing to our business plan for the last 14 months. We released our product and platform and brand to the world in February last year. And since that time, we've had over 4,000 registered users help hundreds of people share and pay bills, close to $2 million of bills on our platform, and over, two, over 280 of Australia's biggest companies already on the Help Pay platform because their customers want to use us. And this is all because of our brand about Aussies helping each other. It's a brand promise we stand before, behind. It's all about destigmatizing debt, helping mates out. And as, you, as you, we take you through some of the stats and data, you'll see why this is so important. Secondly, we've built and released this amazing tech platform that really has never been done anywhere in the world before. We've both got a business to consumer model and a business to business model. And at the end of, by the end of today's webinar, you'll understand about each and the differences. We partner with BPay, which means any of BPay's 60,000 existing business customers can instantly use Help Pay Today and their customers can use Help Pay Today. There's no integration work for them to do. And every single transaction on our platform is 100% reconciled, compliant, no fraud. We've really proven out that our tech stack works. And that's why we're coming to the wider market today, as in you, to help take our message further and to fund the next stage of our growth. We also have really perfected our revenue model and released it to market. Our first 14 months was all about getting users and proving out to businesses that people want a service like ours. And now just last month, we released our SaaS business plans. And that's how we're gonna monetize and, and hopefully very quickly go to a cash flow positive business. And we do that because of a huge addressable market that we have. Um, there are many use cases for using a platform like HelpPay. Our go-to-market messaging is all about making helping easier, but there's so many reasons people are using HelpPay uh, as a payment platform. For example, credit card points if you're a points hunter. You can pay your ATO tax bill on HelpPay and get full credit card points. Or think about the use case of a share house. Uh, share houses uh, are often using HelpPay because it instantly shows who has paid what element of the bill and the money goes directly to the provider rather than to somebody else in that share house. Adult children moving out of home for the first time and the parents, uh, sorry, adult children, uh, you know, people turning the age of 18, they move out of home, the parents want to pay some of their bills for them. Don't just put money into the bank account, use help pay, it's instantly reconciled, money goes to the source. So we only need a fraction of the actual market and we're going to go into some detail later so you understand just how big the opportunity is in front of us. And lastly, and this is the bit where it's about you, this capital raise. We want to supercharge the next stage of our growth. We've done so much with so little to this point. And now it's about getting interested investors like yourselves who want to back not only our vision and mission, but also back a for-profit, for-purpose business. We are all about social impact and helping people out. But also at the end of the day, we want to have substantial returns to investors. And the, more, and the, the better our business goes, the more impact we can make. Actually, in fact, the better those returns can be as well. And now you'll hear more about that from Rowan. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate that intro. Um, hi, everyone. I'm one of the co-founders here at HelpPay. I've been on the journey uh, since the very start of HelpPay, and I love the fact that we're combining something really special, which is a social impact with improving people's bottom line and company bottom line. As Andrew mentioned, you know, share housing, you know, not every use of HelpPay is a, is a tragedy. Um, you know, some people are just getting by or just want an easier relationship in their share houses. But you may not know this, 45% of people that open their house up to become a share house or, are, or you know, choose to um, live in a house that's a share house arrangement do so uh, because they can't afford to live by themselves. And the problem really is, is that even though not many people talk about it and these sort of stats don't make a lot of headlines, the reality is, is that millions of bills in Australia are paid late every single year. And if you've never been one of the people that has got into this vicious cycle of debt, first of all, congratulations, it's a, it's a really good thing you've managed to stay out. But if you've ever had a kid or you've got married and you thought you knew what you were in for, let me show you what happens when you do get into a vicious cycle of debt. Reality is when providers send out a bill, a handful of a portion of their um, customers simply can't pay it. 
And having worked for a decade on the other side of this, the provider side over at Snowy Hydro's electricity brands, Seem to have uh, lost Rowan's connection there. Um, if I get the nod, I'll know I'm coming through, and I'll, I'll fill in for a moment. But we're going to lose actually control here of the of the screen. So, yeah, what Rowan was going on to say is, um, yeah, people experience multiple rounds of follow up from a, from a company. It increases financial anxiety. They get increases in uh, feelings of shame. Um, then when experiencing financial anxiety, it's common for people to increase, increase use of alcohol, tobacco, substance abuse, gambling, increases domestic and family violence. And the problem just grows. People become more anxious and it's a cycle. Uh, and what happens? Those companies just keep uh, se sending bill after bill, follow up after fo follow up. And ultimately, some customers go into debt collection. Um, so customers are pursued and providers are forced to take a loss and write off their debts. And we've obviously just lost the whole screen there. Is that right, Sarah? I can see you. All I right. can hear you, but I can't see the screen, Andrew. I think we've yeah. lost Rowan. We've lost Rowan's connection, so we've lost the screen, but that's all right. What I might do is I'll just, I'll just keep talking through. I'm sure Rowan will get online again, again soon. So it's a big problem, yeah, and it's only getting worse. There's 25,000 divorces each year, 4.9 million Australians with chronic illnesses. There's um, one in six people grow up in poverty. There's $1.8 billion a year in customer debt is sent to de debt collectors every year. So this is a problem, um, and we've basically now built a digital tool to solve this challenge. And so what Help Pay is all about is giving digital tools for people who want to care about who want to help those who they care about. Um, so people are having a hard time making ends meet. Our help pay platform destigmatize asking for that help and then getting that help directly to the provider of that bill. And the number one reason why people uh, who can help hesitate to and don't because of lack of trust where the money is going. And that's the problem that we've solved. Now I might just... Um, See if I can share my screen so that we can get the deck on board. If you could just bear with me one moment. It's great when there's a catastrophic tech failure, but uh, <laughs> that's how we pull through the counts. So um, if you can get, oh, well done. All right. So how do we go about solving this problem? Um, what we have done is we have built a world's first, the world's sm smartest payment page. In just a few clicks, anyone with the Help Pay app, and this is available to you right now. You can go to the uh, Apple App Store, the uh, Google Android Store, you can go to a web browser and instantly uh, register for an account, and then you can set up your bill, scan it, and turn that bill into its own shareable payment page. You can share that bill, that, that page with one person or with many. It's got banking grade security built into it. And literally once you've got the app on your phone, it's one click pay as well. So in the instance of um, share houses, uh, one person puts the bill into the system and it's instantly uh, sent amongst a group. You can see who's chipped away at it. Simple, secure sharing. Uh, any, anyone can go to that payment page and it's account down, not account up. So unlike we often get compared to GoFundMe, in GoFundMe situation, you set up these campaigns, you tell, tell a story, but the money goes into someone's bank account and it raises as much money as you can. All we're trying to do is create a trust mark so that when you get asked to pay on help pay, you know, one, that the money's going directly to the provider, not to an individual. It's instantly reconciled to that provider, so providers love us. And also no two people can pay the same bill at one time and it can never be, it can never be overpaid real-time updates on this payment page of exactly um, how much is left owing. So yeah, if you put this into a real life use case, a provider issues a bill, people who can't pay then share that link, uh, family and uh, customers ask, ask for help with that link, family and friends contribute, payments sent directly to the provider. And this is the key point. And this is where our business model is actually built around. Providers who are doing those rounds and rounds of follow-up spend money on debt teams, on follow-ups, phone calls, on sending letters, on chasing SMSs. When you use help pay and crowdfund help and, and providers can turn a one-to-one -one relationship with a customer into a one-to-many relationship 
with that customer's network. So literally using crowdfunding for a specific bill. What that means for providers is they've got better cash flow, they're not spending as much money on systems and technology, uh, and it's a new way for them to collect payments, and it's a new way to give tools to their customers to make their customers' lives easier. And I'll talk more about, I guess, the number of customers we've got on board and, and um, I guess, uh, how that then goes into signing these providers onto our platform. But what's been interesting being in market for the last 14 months with the, you know, the thousands of people using the platform is the number one reason why providers actually really love us is because we help them meet their corporate social responsibility goals and the benefits that we provide them. Uh, in, in, in that area. We can help providers and companies make better social impact by instead of releasing debt collectors, by set, instead of hound, hounding their customers, give them tools to help themselves. It's a far more empathetic and trustworthy ways uh, to get paid. As a tech platform, we've got a whole source, uh, a whole roadmap of new advancements coming. And it's one of the reasons we're doing this fundraise. Um, one of them is what we call Help Pay Stories. So Help Pay Stories is where you can optionally, if you want to, when you put a bill into the platform, also publish it as a public story. Uh, it'll go onto our website. You can, uh, it's a bit, uh, people can read about it. And we've got kind-hearted strangers going in there every day, chipping away at other people's bills. And the number one question our call centre actually gets is, um, how can I pay somebody else's bill? How can I just help somebody out? We know Australians are doing it tough. So that's just one of the little things that we've put into market uh, to make people's lives easier. Something else that we're postulating and working at the moment is help pay wallet. This is something that's coming in the future, we hope. Uh, it also does depend a little bit on how this, this fundraising round goes, but this will be the ability to put funds into a digital wallet for a particular person or for a group and say, right, those funds are there to be used on the help pay platform, but only go to BPay approved bills. We don't do payments to cryptocurrencies. We don't do payments to gold bullion. So you can put money into a help pay wallet knowing that the person who receives those funds can use them for the right reasons. Okay, I'll just keep going. If I can't see everyone's screen, uh, everyone's faces now. So if Rowan does come back online, give me a hoy, please. Otherwise you're stuck. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, hello, Rowan. Sorry, no, sorry about that, everybody. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, I've gone through your slides, Rose. You'll catch up in a moment. We're back to me, actually. <laughs> so what we've actually got, um, what we've done for the last 14 months, we've got amazing PR for what our business does. We've been on Channel 9 News, we've been on uh, The Australian, we've been syndicated by News Corp. Media loves what we do. We've got thousands of users. We've, got, uh, we've proven our product market fit. We've spent basically nothing on marketing. All we've got is amazing PR that has attracted consumers to our platform and they are uploading bills on behalf of all of Australia's biggest, custom, uh, biggest providers because they want to use our platform. So think about that data that we've collected and that, that we've got. We take that data about these providers um, and, and we go and approach them. We say, hey, your customers are already using us. Why haven't you signed up for a brand agreement with us? And then in the, in, the last couple, in the last month, we've started moving those brand agreements onto paid SaaS business plan subscribers. And that's where we start to take a substantial amount of revenue and also help and actually save money for the providers that are on our platform. Um, so yeah, every major bank, every major telco, um, various government departments, heaps of councils, customers want to use our platform. And there's, if there's one thing providers want to do, they want to make their customers' lives easier. Um, and the platform already exists. We've built the platform. We've made bill sharing easier. And it's simply a matter of now us going to these providers and, and signing them up. Um, all our key metrics are going north. Uh, and the key metric that we're going to move next is providers on a paid SaaS business plan. And that's largely what this fundraising uh, campaign is for. Is for. Ro, back to you. All right, hopefully, and apologies again, everybody. My internet has not cut out in a year, and of course it chooses tonight to do it. But look, let me tell you very quickly why we're attractive to businesses. Again, having worked on the other side of the fence, it is very, very difficult to target customers effectively that haven't yet told you they need help with effective help. And the reason why is a brand that people don't tell their companies is because fundamentally they don't really trust them very much. You know, if you're in trouble, who are you most likely to go to? You're most likely to go to your friends, your family, your mum, your dad, your best mate, and sort of confide in them. Customers are also getting really conscious these days about what happens to their data. The fact is electricity, insurance, telco companies, they don't need to know that you lost your job. They don't need to know that you or your partner are sick. They don't need to know that something's, you know, something else is going on in your life that makes things unable to pay. 
traditionally you have to tell those stories uh, in order to hopefully get some leniency. But today that's an information security risk. Why would an energy company want to know that one of their customers has, uh, you know, and uh, you know they're holding health records basically of a customer? They don't, because the last thing an energy company needs is a customer's health information uh, being sold in the event that they get compromised. This is a really quick uh, lens of where we sit in our competitive analysis. We know that we're one of the only. Uh, multi-payer and direct-to-business um, organizations in the world. It's really easy to transfer money between each other, person to person, no disputing it, really easy, you know, pay ID, mobile phone, but the fact is money never actually definitely gets to where it's meant to go. You have to, you know, base everything on trust, and I'm sure, as I'm sure Andrew's already covered, um, trust is the number one reason why people who can help choose not to, because they don't necessarily trust or believe that when they're asked, hey, I need 200 bucks for the gas bill, the money's definitely going to the gas bill. So this is our competitive area. This is our competitive advantage. Andrew, next slide, please. Uh, just keep on playing it out, please. So we actually, while we are unique, what we have done is actually put together components uniquely. There are plenty of peer-to-peer -peer sharing, um, sharing apps out there, as I've mentioned. The next evolution was crowdsourcing. But again, there was never any guarantee that the money actually, you know, for the claimed purpose of helping someone get out of hospital or recover from a thing or a sick cat or whatever it is, um, it, the, at the end of the day, that money just goes to a personal bank account. It never definitely reaches the right area. And so what Help Pay has done is really just the next evolution of where we're going uh, in uh, finance, which is... Um, single person can pay the whole bill or a group can help, you know, chip away and pay off a bill with a guarantee that the money goes directly where it is. The competitive advantage of this also is that businesses can um, embrace us. Businesses can't embrace the GoFundMes and the Fundlies and the Splitwises of the world because if they put their name to it and someone raises well over the amount of money that they said that they needed for their sick cat, and then the money never actually reaches them, their brand is compromised. But because we have that, that promise, it's there. The really attractive thing also about us is that the fact is profits are under pressure and they were under pressure before COVID. They're under pressure during COVID and uh, COVID has left a really nasty amount of debt sitting on a lot of companies' books. Every single year, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars a year uh, are, are set aside uh, per company in some instances. Um, for bad debt, because they know that despite all of their best efforts over the coming year, they're still going to have to write off tens of millions of dollars worth of bills. And that is money that is set aside that otherwise would be used to grow their business, to pay dividends, to buy their competitor, to lower the cost of their products. But they have to factor that into uh, everything they do as a business. The most effective debt outreach available is phone calls, uh, because you know the chances are you're going to get to that person. Um, but it, you may not know this, the average margin on a, on a service provider's bill, say electricity or telco, is somewhere between 3 and 5%, which means that for every single $100 they chase, they can't spend any more than 3 to $5 bucks, um, per outreach to get that $100 in the door. Otherwise, it becomes um, that they lose all their margin. You could imagine a 40-minute phone call that costs their business $25 wipes out five, five months' worth of margin potentially in that $100 scenario. And new customers replace lost ones. What I mean by this is when you cut off a customer because they can't pay, um, your acquisition teams, the business's acquisition teams, have to go replace that customer at somewhere between $150 and $250 per customer. And all of that just to stand still. They didn't grow in the market. In fact, if they don't replace that customer that has cut off, um, they actually go backwards. So it's just smart business to enable helping so that they don't go backwards in the first place and that they can you know, not put money aside for debt. Of course, it's not just about the hard dollars and cents these days. Businesses are expected to positively impact the communities that they um, service and touch as well. Um, environmental action is now a hygiene factor. It is expected. I don't know anyone that says, ah, I don't mind, I don't, you know, I don't care. Um, you know, in fact, if you do worse for the environment, that's fine by me. We all expect carbon neutrality. And uh, even if um, people don't necessarily, aren't necessarily that passionate about it, they're doing it anyway. We believe the next the next sort of evolution of where we're going is into the mental and physical health. And you might have even seen it was reported about a month ago that Dr. Philip Lowe, the head of the RBA, was meeting with suicide prevention organisations because of the very impact that um, the RBA interest rate, rate, interest rate rises were having. You don't do that in a society where profit without purpose 
is acceptable. So there is no profit without purpose anymore. And we believe we're right on that cresting wave. Uh, next animation, please, Andrew. So with help, hey, businesses can demonstrate they're taking action, not just to clean up debt in the community, but prevent it from starting in the first place. They're making, they can make all of their bills click, uh, click shareable in a single click. Um, less debt equals less anxious customers equals better communities. And you know, kind of companies uh, can demonstrate that. And we are frankly cheaper, more scalable, digital and mobile than any other solution that a business can put in place. In fact, most of our business plans cost less than about a third, maybe a half if you're a particularly uh, bad payer, um, for then hiring one new staff member who would be brought on board to chase debt after it's out the door instead of preventing debt in the first place. Next slide, please. These are our main two revenue paths. So there are you know, other, other options we've talked about and you'll see in the uh, full document next week if you've expressed your uh, registered and expressed your interest. Um, to date, we have had $1 per transaction, uh, per transaction helper payments. And what that really has enabled us to do is just we've just used that to validate uh, the model to date and validate usage without eating into our capital. We've never spent any of our capital on any transactions and we're not going to in the future either because where we're heading now is B2B SaaS plans. And these SaaS plans are effectively like a mobile phone subscription. Um, company pays us a certain amount per month to allow a, a, a volume of transactions to go through. Next slide, please. Um, and that will allow uh, businesses to then prevent debt up to a certain amount each month. I want to be really clear because it's a question we got last time in a webinar. So thank you to that previous uh, person. Um, we can create uh, SaaS plans as far and wide as um, the uh, business might want. It's not that we have four, we're only highlighting four here today, but we could we could create custom plans, uh, whatever works. By signing up to this, by, by signing up to a SaaS business plan, payments become transaction fee free. They get access, they can turn all of the bills into one click. They can add um, help pay links to my account, mobile apps. Um, they can even spin them up on the fly if they needed to when they're dealing with a customer. Next slide, thank you. And really, this is a go-to-market. This is our go-to-market flywheel. And where this starts to spin really aggressively is when each of the three um, groups in this in this wheel um, start to understand, and de, you know, we start to destigmatize. And Andrew Andrew talked right at the very start of this about getting on how providers bills. We are getting on uh, providers bills, or at least that's the plan with a couple of providers we're with at the moment. They've um, told us uh, verbally and in writing that they're going to because they see the benefits of destigmatizing help and assistance because the reality is also they shield they shield and take on a lot of calls every month from concerned mums from concerned dads from brothers from sisters going I want to pay the bill of my sibling and they can't talk to them about it because of the privacy act what we can do here is oh, if you see help pay on a bill hey you know dad hey mum hey brother hey sister you're with you know tango energy for example send me that help pay link that I know that's on your bill and I'll pay it for you. It just opens up those conversations. Next slide, please. So how big is the market? The market in Australia is massive. It's about 700 million bills a year uh, issued and there's somewhere between, there's about 31 million that are missed annually and 65 million are paid late. Um, no business is immune, and I want to be really clear, B pays 60,000 billing providers. We don't know of a single one that would be immune from customers paying late or unable, you know, having customers that are unable to pay. I know, and I've seen it firsthand, that even, you know, second tier, third tier businesses with half a million or a million customers are putting aside millions to tens of millions of dollars every year, money that they would otherwise spend on growing their business. And the, frankly, all debt recovery activities between all organizations are basically the same. Wait for the customer to fail to pay, then get on the phone and send a text message. Now, can you imagine how effective that is if you've missed three bills at once and all of a sudden you're being hounded as a customer? It's not very effective at all. People just learn to ignore their phone. Um, and no business wants unpaid bills. No business wants to have a bad experience with their customers. So as we've mentioned, um, HelpPay can be adopted by BPay's 60,000 providers today. We are using our uh, data that we've gathered so far and we've prioritized 705 pro primary priority providers. This is our absolute first tier of providers of local government, banks, credit unions, electricity and gas companies, organizations that our customers have already told us are a high priority for them. We have a second set of priority in private hospital, medical, uh, and education, particularly private schools, 
where up to 30% of private school education fees are paid for already by grandparents and other family members. And we're already having conversations with one very large network of private schools who are currently having to make the heartbreaking decision of finding better ways for people to be able to come together under their Christian values um, or kick those kids out of their um, school and deny them the education that they're used to. We need just 56 out of the 4,400 plus providers we've identified, uh, which is 1.2% at an average of $2,000 a month each to be um, break even on current budgets. Now, 56 out of 4,400 is a tiny, tiny amount. And I'm really pleased to tell you, we've just this week uh, signed up Tango Energy onto one of our SaaS plans. It's an absolute milestone and a real validator of our business model. Um, businesses don't take these things up lightly. Uh, so you can probably ch ch uh, chunk that down to about 55 out of 4,444 remaining. Um, and uh, we've, you know, one, we know from our selling and our sales cycle that they're faster. Uh, we can get one or two people um, onto business plans. We know that other companies will follow suit faster as well because it becomes an issue of FOMO for them as well. And finally, this is just a very quick view of our B2C usage on the left, which is informing where we have spent the majority of our time approaching electricity and gas water and telco companies. We are also targeting and talking to uh, other water companies in uh, around the country, not just in Victoria, where it is now regulated that bills must be shareable. Um, but we're talking to councils, we're talking to funeral homes, uh, real estate agents, um, and uh, the uh, there is also a SAS agreement being finalised with one very large million customer plus water company. They're going through final board approval with us at the moment. Right, I might just um, jump in again for a moment. I'm very pleased that, uh, although we lost Rowan momentarily, we did gain uh, Tony Hood, our chair, who I'm going to throw to in a moment. I would just like to make one small correction. Um, when I was introducing or mentioning Sarah and John in my introduction, uh, Sarah is a non-executive director of the business. John doesn't hold a director, a non-executive director role in the business. He great, uh, very graciously chairs our uh, social impact advisory boards. So I just want to make that clarification, but then uh, Tony, over to you and thank you for coming. Let me turn off my, oh no, my microphone's on. There you go. Um, look, what a pleasure I have to chair Help Pay. Um, when I was asked, I was really um, a, a humble and grateful to lead an organization like this. So the business and enterprise um, is really about people. And in this case, it's about people helping other people and the whole foundation of what help pay is. So um, yes, we have a problem. And the problem is at some times in our lives or our friends' lives or um, uh, the general populace life, people fall on hard times. Um, and very often it's temporary. And how do you show that you support those people? Um, you can pat them on the back or you can band you together with your mates um, and use a platform like HelpPay to make a real difference. Um, whether it's a token gesture or, hey, we know you're on hard times, we'll, we'll back you for the next three months. Um, HelpPay digitalizes something that we probably all do anyway, and it's a giving culture and a real Aussie culture, to be perfectly frank. So to introduce the board of directors, um, I've known Andrew for about a decade and a half. Um, through a tech company that he was um, well, the owner of and um, CEO of, um, Revium. And so I knew Andrew's intellect and capacity to build a robust tech stack. Um, when the pitch deck crossed my table, um, I immediately saw the help it could do when it was an idea. And then I knew that the team would build a really robust stack using all the relevant um, tech to make sure it's compliant, robust, et cetera. So that's um, Andrew uh, moving right along. Um, Rowan, um, I met a little later and he was one of the founding trio that was having a conversation when a family member said, um, how can we help someone? And um, Rowan's probably already told that story, but the idea came from love um, and it has turned into the robust, robust platform that it is. So Rowan's skill is really client facing um, and is in charge of B2B sales and also um, you know, articulation, articulating the social heart of the organization. 
Um, Adam Abadi, who's not here today, is now chairing the company that Andrew stepped away from to go full time with HelpPay. Um, Andrew is a social, sorry, Adam's a social um, media expert. Um, and I met him when I did a merger um, of his business with the company called Revium. So Adam's um, an economic rationalist and knows how to communicate socially and through social media platforms. Uh, myself, um, always hard to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm a financial professional, um, director at the accounting firm William Buck and head the corporate advisory team. Uh, hold an economics degree, an MBA, um, and look, I'm focusing my life on making a difference for others and having the biggest impact I can. And I feel help pay is one of those mediums to achieve that. Sarah Tinsley, um, welcome back from New York, is it Sarah? Um, Sarah arrived this morning? Late last night, I think. Late last night. Um, Sarah is general counsel um, and um, company secretary for an Australian unicorn. Um, and it's an Australian tech unicorn. To have her bless our board is really wonderful. Um, a social heart, but a really practical tech background. And of course, um, in yeah, general counsel, a legal degree, um, pop of the pop. So thanks, Sarah, for um, joining our board. Jumping over the page. Tony, we sorry. Uh, shall we just, uh, whilst before we jump on and move into social impact, I think uh, we had promised Sarah the floor. So, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Across to you. Oh, sure. Thank you. No, I just wanted to say hi. Very happy to be here. And um, just, I guess, tell the people on the call why I chose to to involve myself with Help Pay. And in 30 seconds, um, I work for a company called Culture Amp, which is 100% for profit, but has a heart and a soul and has a purpose. And that means a huge amount to me. And I think for more and more people out there, it's, you know, first and foremost above a lot of other things um, and help pay obviously ticks all of those boxes. But even more so than that, the first time I ever met Andrew and he was telling me about the business, um, I walked away from it and just my mind blew up with the possibilities of what can be done. Um, and if you look at, you know, everything, I spent a lot of time in my career in sort of the media and entertainment industries. And that was the first thing that jumped into my mind and said, well, you could do a ton of things in that industry, you know, all the way from media to funerals, to utilities, to social support, to education. And then last night, watching the federal budget, you know, every item that was being ticked off the list, help pay can do something there, help pay can support that, help pay can deliver something. Um, in those different areas. So for me, looking at it as a SaaS tech business, um, you've got to meet metrics, you've got to deliver revenue, and you need to increase your customer base. And that's a really hard thing to do at scale quickly. Um, but Help Pay has the possibilities to do that. So from a for-profit perspective, I, you know, I'm very supportive of the options and the possibility of the business and very um, proud to support it. Oh, Sarah, um, so well said. Thank you very much. And it's interesting. It reminds me, um, as the idea was being formed, um, I listened to the A16Z podcast about December 2019, 2020, on um, social fintech, the holy grail of fintech. And when I listened to the podcast, again, out of New York, they were talking about the reason a social fintech is so important is that it's a low cost of client acquisition. Um, virtually nothing because people have a good story and they share it and scaling um, when we were reviewing the Venmo um, story they burnt capital and they had massive working capital and high client acquisition costs so we designed a platform that doesn't require working capital um, and has an ultra low client acquisition cost so Sarah thanks for reminding me about the roots and the why now, I'm going to go across to the next page, which is introducing um, the Social Impact Advisory Board. So Help Pay has built the tech. It's not a, a startup without tech and a promise we'll, we'll build tech. We've built a really robust platform, which includes the use of Stripe to be credible for the banking sector and particularly BPay owned by, uh, is it the four major banks? So as a consequence, we've had to build a really robust tech stack and we've ticked the box there. But with the platform comes the question, how can we use a platform for the best social good? 
So while we're a profit with purpose company, we turned to the great John Bertram, and thanks for joining us, John, and I'll throw across to you in a moment, to say how can we um, capture, uh, not from a completely philanthropic perspective, how can we do the most social good with a platform? And so um, we approached John, and John um, will explain why he's um, uh, accepted the position as Chair of Social Impact. We approached John to get the greatest ideas and those bold, big, hairy, or audacious things of how can this platform help um, housing? How can it help um, you know, in areas that we haven't thought of, but how can this platform be, be put to the best use? So, John, you don't require much introduction, but given that I have the um, good fortune of introducing you, um, I know that you're a multiple times Olympian and an Olympic medal holder. Congratulations. And, of course, um, skipper to Australia too to beat the Americans after 138 years of the cup being in their hands. Um, we're talking help pay, but, um, John, what would you like to say? Um, what interested you about help pay? Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Tony, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, you know, look, from my perspective uh, in, my, in my experience in building and being involved in building high performance teams in the world of sport and in business, I launched, I was co-founder of a company. We launched a company on NASDAQ in the late nineties, for example. So we did the whole Silicon Valley thing as well. Uh, it's all about people, you know, and the, it's about, it's about a vision that's exciting, that's exciting for people. It's, uh, it's about over the horizon thinking. That's what startups are all about. Let's face it, you know, stuff that hasn't been done before. Um, Andrew talked about a market fit at one stage. That's absolutely true. It has to be, you know, demand. It blows me away in terms of some of the ideas that young people in particular come up with, in, you know, via, powered by this crazy thing called the internet. We don't even know where that's going, let's face it, compared to where we'll be in 10 or 20 years' time. But it's powered by people. And uh, when Tony first approached me about this organization and the philanthropic space and the SAS model, because let's face it, it's a for-profit organization based on working very closely with the providers of services. And the, and the good that comes out of this is people uh, getting bills paid in a, you know, in, in a very, very tough environment that to execute, it's about the quality of the people involved, and, you know, and, and the people comes around in terms of, you know, the, the value proposition. It's about an exciting uh, vision. It's a purpose in life and purpose is so important now. We know that, you know, just Gen Y, Gen Z. And indeed, it's, a, um, it, it's the culture of an organization, you know, about trust and integrity and honesty. You know, it's not rocket science. So when I first got to know uh, Tony, in fact, and the founders, uh, Andrew and um, uh, Rowan and and uh, uh, and uh, uh, Adam, we did quite a few laps of the tan in Melbourne, which you do. It's wonderful to talk and walk, and uh, started to get an idea of really where these folks were coming from. And I was I was intrigued, and indeed, I as a result helped put together a little social impact advisory board, as we call it. And that's really to help this organization with hopefully out of the box thinking on how this particular application can be used throughout the community, not only within Australia, but around the world. So it's a delight to be involved and it's a lot delight to be involved with such high quality people, trustworthy people from my perspective. And I've seen a lot of organizations, I've seen a lot of people in, you know, in terms of what I've done in the past and I've been very impressed with the integrity of the organization that we've got here. I'm um, humbled by your words, and it's great to have you on board. Thank you very much. Um, it's funny, I'm ask, thanking you for being on board. Um, if anyone missed the pun, um, <laughs> my, my um, poor sense of humour. Look, joining John on the board, uh, sorry, on the advisory board um, is Chris Adams. Chris is our US connection, probably best known for his work on the inconvenient truth. He's a communicator that's helped with um, some of the messaging. And for those of you that have expressed interest or are about to express interest after the seminar, um, the deck when it's released, um, the investment deck after the EOI phase um, is hopefully going to pop with the comms messages um, supported by Chris Adams. Lauren Morecambe, um, Associate Director at KPMG. I've had a, a 
long um, connection with Lauren and we used to work together. Lauren um, brings a really lovely perspective. Um, her story, uh, not here today or maybe on online to communicate her story, but her struggles to be best in her space um, and her journey is riveting and she's a great person to have on the Social Impact Advisory Board, as is Sandy, whose heart's bigger than her head and or equal equal in size to her head. She's a true carer that brings um, a caring um, and, and registered nurse experience, people dealing with a cold face to the Social Impact Advisory Board. So we've got a great team and across time, um, some of the questions that came up in the last seminar, um, how does this uh, support First Nations people? A provider I was dealing with who runs a large government electricity company, his first question was, how does it support victims of domestic, or sorry, survivors of domestic violence. And of course, there's answers for each of these questions, which we're not going to go into today, unless they're asked of this group. But the product does um, allow payments to be made, um, even under court order to parties where the address can't be disclosed, because we don't ingest it into the system. So some of the key attributes that we've built into the product allows it to be um, support people that need anonymity for a number of reasons but the codes make sure it's a legitimate bill and the bill can't be overpaid. So, Andrew, I'll throw across to you and um, maybe it's almost question time. Yeah, thanks. And we do have a hard, hard, hard stop at 7pm. We won't be going over time. Thank you, John and Sarah, Tony, for coming along today and thanks for your ongoing support. Um, I just wanted to, before we throw to questions, um, uh, just, yeah, very briefly mention, look, with what we raised from this capital raise, it's all about B2B sales acceleration. That's according to our business plan. We've executed everything, um, yeah, um, as per our plan. And as per our plan next, it's about signing providers. And I just wanted, uh, and then you can see on the screen, a little bit of funds for product development, operations overhead, and certainly this is a global business. This is something that can go global. For speed to market in Australia, we partnered with BPay. We'll decouple that in other overseas markets. And um, yeah, we really want to go big with this. The most important Thing, as I said at the start, is the people on this call who might be interested in joining us. We really want to work uh, with people who have got an interest in what we're doing here, an interest in making money and an interest in some social impact. If either of those appeals to you, then um, yeah, we'd love you to express interest and, and get our full offer and uh, have a deeper look. Uh, a very detailed offer document is coming out next week. I just wanted to, before we do the full Q&A, just mention what we've really done at Help Pay is digitise what already goes on in the world. People, you can share your bill with other people by manually giving it to them, by giving complicated codes into bank accounts, but we've just digitised it. Go and use the Help Pay app. It is so easy to enter four tiny data points and share that bill. Um, we'd like to think, you know, we get up there with brand names like, you know, people didn't know, know they needed Uber until Uber was around. People didn't know they were going to get addicted to Facebook until Zuckerberg uh, invented Facebook. Once you use the Help Pay app and see how easy it is, it's a game changer for how people can run their lives uh, and help other people out and even just pay their own bills. And we've got a we've got a fully engineered business plan that goes five years into the future where we are got so much more, so many more layers to this business, bill management applications. Um, yeah, that we don't have time to cover off today, but uh, we're all super excited about it and would be more excited if you could join us um, on the journey. And it's just, you know, we've created this amazing business model where effectively the providers who actually sign up with us will do the marketing for us. Um, when providers start putting us on bills, Alinda Energy with 1.2 odd million customers uh, last month put us in a bill insert to all their customers. We've built a business model where the providers will do our marketing um, and yeah, the, the pieces are all just falling into place now. So it's an incredible, exciting time to get on board. Uh, Anna, I think you're coming back online to um, uh, run the Q&A and... Yeah, thank, thanks, everyone. I'm back. Thanks, everyone. That was a truly insightful presentation. I always love hearing you speak. I feel like I learn something new every time. Um, as we said, this is now time for some Q&A. So we've got a few popping into the box here. While we wait, um, while people drop their questions in, I'll just give a little bit of context as to where we are in the stage at the moment. So we're in the expression of interest phase, which is where we're going out to market to gain. Um, sorry, Tony, I'm just going to mute you. 
can everyone hear me okay I feel like we've got there we go beautiful I don't like the sound of my own voice I'm sure I'm sure you don't need two of me um so we're in the expression of interest phase we are really trying to understand you know market interest in the offer at the moment so key terms of those offer aren't available um we will be opening the offer next week. So do stay tuned to your emails. If you've not yet expressed interest, please do so. You'll receive um, a link um, in your sort of post-webinar information to, to go and do so. And you'll be first to access the offer document constitution and subscription agreement when it becomes available, when the offer does open. So do keep a keen eye on your email. Um, so we've got a question here as well. So what rights do the investors have with respect to companies' governance and direction? I do encourage you to check out the constitution when it becomes available. All of the information about governance, um, et cetera, will be included in there. So thank you so much for your question. I might just add to that one to Cathy. All investors in this, in this round do rank equally to all other shareholders, including the founders, myself, directors, so same rights as everyone else, but yeah, lots more detail about that in writing in our offer document. So you'll get it in writing there is probably the best way to answer that as well. Kathy, just to also add, uh, thank you for coming along uh, tonight. But um, uh, we we did have a couple of questions last week about how people might be able to get involved with the Social Impact Advisory Board or get involved in a different way uh, in our organisation. We're always open to those conversations uh, with investors. So. Uh, yeah, please look out for the information that comes through, uh, but there's always uh, conversations to be had if um, getting actively involved in, in help pay is uh, something that would be of interest to you. Awesome. We've got one more question, which is what's the minimum buy-in? Again, all of that information will become available when the offer goes live next week. So do please keep a keen eye on your email. And I'll jump in on that. It is, it is set at $250. Uh, we are very happy to take very small investments that, because of the legalities around a crowdsource funding round. This is why the government set up this legislation. Um, and we want people to come on board as potentially you know, small investors who've got a passion and interest for what we're doing. And if we can uh, work with shareholders and get to know shareholders because they've made a small investment, then we're only too happy to do so. Um, Rowan and myself are probably two of the most contactable, responsive people you'll ever meet online to our own detriment sometimes. So, yeah, uh, we, we, yeah, I think that helps just go to show that, yeah, we'd love engagement from investors. And, no, yeah, I think 250 is actually the minimum in the legislation, if I'm not wrong. But, yeah, that's where it'll start. On that yeah. note as well, we are obviously approaching the end of the webinar. So if we've got any more questions, please pop them in the box. Otherwise, don't hesitate to reach out to the team via their company profile. Obviously, their details are there. So more than happy to answer any questions that you've got. And we've got one last one. Will there be an order of taking expression of interest? I'm not exactly sure what you mean, Kathy. So essentially, just how, how this operates, you'll express interest via our platform, by the virtual platform, and you will get early access to the investment offer when it opens. So there's not really an order of taking that expression of interest. If you've expressed interest, then that's that's all we need you to do um, to get that uh, on the investor wait list. Wonderful. If we don't have any more questions, I might hand over to the help pay team. So exciting. We've got from Andrew. Thank you. Couldn't agree more. Um, to wrap it up, over to you, Help Pay. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Oh, look, I really did say my last piece. I'll have I'll run us over time if you give me the mic again. So let's Tony or Rowan, any final Ooh. words? Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. And I'm sure Rowan's going to apologise again for his technical muck-ups, but these things happen. Uh, we don't blame you for... You didn't run the internet. You didn't invent the internet, Rowan, so... No bother, but apologies to everyone for that. Wonderful. Thanks, Thanks everyone, for coming. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.